Today we are going to create some art that has the purpose to tell a story. So the last time you were in art we looked at the story Tuesday and we looked at what happened to the frogs and how they could float on their lily pads <clears throat> and the trouble and mischief they got into throughout the story. And then at the very end of the story they lose their power to float around um, when the sun rises and they become frogs again and this frog doesn't look very happy and <clears throat> all of the aftermath of what happened after their night out and then the way that Tuesday ends is by the next Tuesday something new happens it's not the frogs this time it looks like it's the pigs and so what I asked you to do was tell a story with a drawing on what happens next in the story for the pigs. What did you think happens next? And you sketched that in your sketchbook with a pencil, your idea of what happens next in the story. And so this was my idea, that the pigs land in the trees and um, there's gonna be a landscape and I didn't get enough time to add more detail but I could add more detail in my finished artwork. So today we are going to create artwork that tells a story. Our story is going to be what happens to the pigs um, on their Tuesday evening adventure. So the way that we're gonna start this is we're gonna start by coloring the sky and we're gonna use paint for this. We're gonna use watercolor paint. So we're gonna need to get um, a manila paper under your work. We're gonna get a water basin and I'm gonna have lots of different colors for your sky to choose from. And you can choose one color or two colors for your sky. Um, on my <clears throat> example here, I used purple and blue. But um, on my example that I'm gonna do with you um, on the video, I'm gonna use red and orange. And so you're gonna get a white piece of paper for your sky. You need to write your name and the day you have art. Day A, day B, day C. You're gonna flip it over and then you're going to create what's called a watercolor wash. First thing I want you to do is put some water on your paints. So I'm gonna get water on my paintbrush and I'm gonna dip, drip some water on top of each of my colors of paint. So now I have a puddle of water on top of each color. So now what I wanna do is add some plain water to my paper. And this is gonna help me create what's called a watercolor wash when you use lots of water and a little bit of color. And now I'm gonna just dip my paintbrush in the paint, just gently tap it with the hairy part, the bristle part of my paintbrush. I'm not digging down into it to where the metal touches the paint. And then I'm just gonna add some color to that water. And that water kind of moves the color around. I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off, get some orange, and add some orange. And I'm gonna let the orange and the red touch. Now, I'm gonna move and put some plain water further down on my paper. And I'm gonna add some more color. Rinse my paintbrush off, because I don't wanna mix the two colors, so before I put my paintbrush on the red and change colors, I need to rinse it off. And then I'm gonna add, finally, the remaining part of the paper wet, get the remaining part with plain water, and then okay now this is really light color so I could go back and add some more paint because now that I have a puddle of water on top of my paint that makes my paint get moist so that it will um, add more darker color to my paper I can darken that up a little bit. Now I want to be careful that I don't keep painting in the same spot because what's going to happen is my paper's really wet and what will happen is if I keep rubbing my paintbrush in the same spot the paper's going to get fuzzy and going to get these little bits of paper stuck to the top and that's because I'm rubbing the paper and I'm going to eventually get a hole in my paper because it's so wet so I need to be careful that I don't keep rubbing and painting in the same exact spot that I move my paintbrush around as I work. So I think this is good. I filled my paper with two colors, let them run together. Okay, so after you get enough paint on your paper, 
Then we're going to do a technique where we add a little bit of salt. So you're gonna just get a little cup of salt at your table and you're gonna pinch a little cup of salt and you're going to splatter that, sprinkle that onto your wet watercolor paint. And you don't need a lot and I don't wanna see you tump the whole thing onto it, just a little bit, pinch a little and just sprinkle it. And you can see what's happening is the salt is uh, grabbing the color and it's making for a nice texture and it's grabbing the paint color and making for dark little spots where the salt is. And so once you've sprinkled your salt on there, then I will come around and get your paints and your water basins and your salt cups. But what you will need to do for me is take your paint, your painting with the salt on it very carefully. I carry it with two hands to the drying rack. Now you wanna be careful because see how the paint wants to drip and run. So you gotta hold it pretty flat Carefully take it over to the drying rack and put it on the drying rack with both of those papers. And then I will get your water basin out of your way and get your paints out of your way and clean up for you. So on the next day, when you get your paper back, this is a different paper, um, but because my red and orange isn't dry yet, but the next day when your paper's dry, this is what it'll look like. It'll be dried, it'll have little um, neat textures of where the colors kind of touched and ran together and where they puddled and how they dried. And then you'll get to see all of the texture that you got with the salt. And remember that texture's how something feels or how it looks like it feels. So over here, it looks like there's a different feeling or different texture here, but when I touch it, it doesn't feel any different, but when I look at it, it looks different. So this would be eye texture. And then touch texture, tactile texture, will be the salt that I can feel stuck to my paper. So now this is gonna be our sky, that's the background. So let's make some ground. And I'm gonna have different colors of ground for you. I'll have some brown construction paper, some green, different green construction paper, some tan. And you get to decide what you want your ground to be. And remember, I'm kind of doing a landscape. So um, I'm reproducing, I'm taking this and I'm putting this on here. So this painting is this background part. So I need some paper that goes across the bottom and some hills for a landscape. So I think I need more than just what I have there. A little bit more green here. Okay, so I'm gonna make some hills. So I'm gonna take scissors and I'm gonna cut a curved line. Maybe, it, maybe I turn it into a wavy line. I'll cut that. Maybe I'll glue that there. Need some more green to overlap down here at the bottom. So I could do that. Um, if I wanted to create more texture than what I already have here, I could take my paper and turn it into grass. And I could just cut little slits all the way down the paper. It kind of already looks a little bit like growing grass. If you have brown, you probably don't want to do this technique with it because it would look kind of silly, brown grass. If you want grass to work, this might be something that you want to do. So you can go through and you can cut that and it already kind of looks like grass and you can glue it down, but if you want to make even more texture, you could take and just kind of squish that up and make that stick up 3D and you could glue that across the bottom of your paper if you wanted. Or if you want even a different texture, you could take and tear paper into pieces. Maybe if you wanted, if you were using brown and you wanted it to look like there were rocks or pebbles on the ground, you could tear it into pieces and then you could glue these individual pieces down to create different texture and you could do it that way. But I think I'm gonna just stick with what I have here. I'm gonna glue these down securely so that they don't pop up off my paper. So what I'm creating here is this part of my drawing. So I'm gonna glue this first rectangle down first at the bottom, I'm gonna do a frame of glue. Don't go crazy with the glue, and make a big glue mess. And I'm gonna scoot this down so it lines up with the bottom edge of my paper. I don't wanna see any sky poking out the bottom. Now for this, I'm gonna do another frame of glue. And notice I don't put the frame of glue right along the very edge of my green because then the, gra the glue will squirt out the sides. Now I need to draw my tree and my pig in the tree. And so I'm gonna use a pencil and eraser. And it's gonna be a little tricky to draw on my paper because I have salt on there. I think what I'm gonna do is start with my pig at the top in the tree. So I'm gonna draw a circle for his head, oval for his nose. He's a happy pig, so I just do curved lines for his eyes, ears, and his
his body. And I'm going to do the top of the tree. And I need the tree trunk. It's going to overlap and go onto the grass. So I draw onto the grass. Then I'm going to use a Sharpie marker like we always do. Remember when we do a drawing, we always outline with Sharpie marker to make sure that we can still see what we drew and let everybody who's looking at our work know what our original drawing was so that when we color, if we don't color the neatest, we can still see our drawing underneath really color anything in with the Sharpie, we just outline and go over our pencil lines. Now if you don't trace your pencil lines perfectly, we like to erase when we're done. Essentially what I drew in my sketchbook, but I do have some empty space here, so um, I think maybe what I'll do is I'll add a barn here just because, or I could add some more trees, just because it's kind of open. And you can look and see, this is kind of a wider piece of paper than what I had in my sketchbook. So I didn't have any of that space over here, like I did in my sketchbook. So I'm, you might have to make a little, a few additions to fill in the space. I can see my pencil lines poking through a little bit. So I'm gonna go through and erase those. I think I'm gonna put a little small barn in the background. So it's like far away. Maybe I'll add a cloud in the sky. Fills up that paper. So then after you have everything outlined, you're going to use construction paper crayons. And they're different than regular crayons. They look like regular crayons. They have the same kind of wrapper, only it's black instead of the color of the crayon. They have Crayola on the side and the uh, wavy line that Crayola likes to use. But the difference between these crayons and regular crayons is regular crayons are made of wax and construction paper crayons are made of clay. They color dark on dark colored paper. A regular crayon wouldn't color as dark as construction paper crayons. So we're gonna use construction paper crayons so we can color over the top of our paint and be able to see the color. A nice, bright, vibrant color. And as you color over the salt, some of the salt's gonna move and, and kind of uh, go fall off your paper and that's okay. As you work, you can kind of just pick your paper up and tap it on the table and sweep that out of your way. I want you to press hard with your crayon and make a dark, heavy mark. You can use whatever crayons best fit your drawing because your drawing doesn't look like mine. Mine is my idea of what happens next in the story, but you have a completely different idea of what happens next in the story. And so I'm going to color this in. And here I have one that's completely finished colored in so you can see what that looks like. So my cow is white, but he's kind of hard to see um, the white crayon. I colored over the purple as much as I could. And so this was another idea I had of what could happen next. Maybe um, the pigs become super pigs and they're flying over and the cows are shocked to see the pigs flying over them and the cows are out in the pasture. So those were two different ideas of what could happen next in the story. And that's how you're going to complete artwork with a purpose to tell a story. Good job, kindergarten.